Hello everyone. Today um, I'm going to make a little video regarding molds. I've gotten a lot of questions on how to use molds properly, especially ones that have small little crevices. Um, and I'm going to show you with three different kinds of molds how to exactly do that. So let's get started and here's what I'm using. Today I will be using gloves on my hands. I find that it's a lot easier for me to work with gloves. We also have a small rolling pin, a tiny spatula, and in here if you've seen my previous videos there is cornstarch in here so we can powder our molds. I also brought Tylos powder. fondant and here we have some of the Wilton molds I brought these specifically because they have these tiny little lines there that can seem intimidating and when you don't know how to use molds I brought these I have some of these listed on my shop but not this specific one and I brought it because this kind of mold is very stretchy and it's sometimes hard to work with it if your fondant is really soft. You'll find that if you pull at the wrong edges, it can deform the shape. And these are the ones that I have listed on my shop. Um, sometimes I find that these can be a little bit difficult to use because the material is a lot harder than the Wilton mold and the pink one that I showed you. I brought this specific one because it has the little legs and sometimes it's hard to pull out the legs without having them lose their shape. So let's get started. I'm going to start with these because I want to show you what to do when you have a mold that has small crevices and spaces like these. And I know some people don't like to use Tylos powder, so for this one, I'm just going to use the fondant straight from the package. Now remember that in this little tub, I have cornstarch, so we're going to go ahead and powder the mold a little bit, and first, what I like to do is I powder the mold and then I make sure I tap off all the excess. Sometimes you have to go in there and take it out. You can also use a brush to dust it out, but this will work. So you'll take your fondant and what you shouldn't do is this. Don't do this and then pull it out and try to cut it. What we're going to do is, you can do it two ways, and this one is probably the easiest. You'll knead your fondant, and then you'll place it right over your mold. And I find that this is a little bit faster than doing what I used to do. So you'll just pull, and you'll do this all around the mold just pull away all the excess and once you're done you can do two things you can let it rest for about 10 minutes but if you're very impatient, you can go ahead and put this in the freezer and that's what I'm going to do. Let's move on to just a simple little bow mold. And again, we'll powder it. Tap out the excess. Sometimes 
what goes wrong with these is that you'll grab too much fondant and then you'll end up having to clean it you can always clean it like we cleaned our previous mold but it's easier when you insert the right amount of fondant in the first place so see here we have a little bit of excess so we will take it out and then the rest just make sure you press it in to all the little spaces and you press down for this one we can go ahead and unmold right away since we don't have that many tight little spaces and what you want to do every time you pull fondant from a mold like this one is hold at the edge don't try to bend it like this one you'll have to do it gently from the edge and then grab the fondant and just kind of peel it out and this is I hope you guys can see it but this is how it looks when it comes out and of course once it dries you can dust it and then what I did with these is I actually dusted them and then I painted them gold and I'll show you in my Instagram and on my Facebook the final picture. I'll link that below so you guys can go ahead and see it. And I'm going to place this right here. Next, sometimes molds like these that are very tiny are intimidating in the beginning because you kind of wonder how in the world you're going to take out that tiny flower once it's in there. And I've mentioned in previous videos that you always want to start with the shape of the cavity. So since the rose is tiny, I grabbed a tiny ball of fondant and I will place it in the cavity. I'll do the three sizes so you can see the difference. And we're going to apply the same technique as we did with the bow. On small molds like these, it's a lot easier to work with your bare hands versus using gloves because, as you can see, they're kind of wrinkly and they don't fit my hand very well. But let me try to unmold this with gloves there we go here then sometimes for molds that have little stars like these it's a little bit of uneven shapes what I do is I like to start with a little ball and I'll press it in the center and apply pressure to the middle. So you, you kind of apply pressure to the middle and your thumb or your finger, whichever finger you want to use, will press the fondant into the crevices. And we will take this out. And there's our tiny, tiny starfish. And in case you noticed, I didn't dust these. So don't worry so much if you forget to dust them with cornstarch. You will be able to take them out. It is important to dust molds that have small, skinny, tiny, tiny little lines because they will get stuck and they will lose their shape. But on molds that have bigger cavities that look a lot easier to unmold, if you forget, it's not a big deal. The next one I want to show you, and this is one of my favorite molds from Wilton. I used this mold to apply a lot of the details on my unicorn um, night cake and that is posted on my Instagram and on my Facebook. I actually got first place in San Antonio um, and I originally when I first started with this mold 
I went only for this cavity here because it seemed easier to unmold, but I really wanted to use the chain to add the details to my unicorn knight. So I went ahead and tried it, and I'm pretty sure you guys have seen this technique, but just as a refresher in case you haven't seen it, or if this is your first time using molds, here is what we're going to do. And I never cleaned out the dust from there, but I only used it that time, so, you know. You'll grab your handy dandy cornstarch pouch, and we'll powder the mold. Excess. For this, the same concept applies. We are trying to insert the fondant in the same shape as our cavity. It's a lot, a lot easier than trying to work with a big piece or a big blob that's all over the place. So here we I will roll it out. You, know, you don't have to be precise, but just make sure you roll it enough so that it fits. And I mean, you can see that I rolled it a little bit skinnier and it's a little bit chunkier on some parts. So, you know, don't be, don't worry about that. And go ahead and press it in. Cut off that piece. This is where our rolling pin comes in. Press in. And once you've pressed in, you can go in either direction. You can go this way or that way. I like to do it both ways just to make sure that I don't pull from here all the way in because sometimes what that will do is it'll pull out the fondant from the cavity and you'll have to start over. And what I'm doing here is with a piece of excess fondant, I'm just running it through the sides to pick up. I'm not sure if y'all can see this, but there's little bits of fondant that stayed outside of the mold. And if you don't clean the edges here, you'll see that on your mold when you take it out. And when you're using a mold like this one, that has very detailed small lines. That's the last thing you want is for a stray piece to be hanging out. It could cost you a competition. It can cost you a bad review. You know, I'm probably exaggerating, but it's very important when using molds that we learn how to use them correctly. So once you have it, what I like to do is I'll flip this over and we'll start pulling the mold away from the fondant. It's a lot easier. And let me zoom you guys in so you can see. So you'll flip it over and then start pulling the mold from the fondant. And if you do this, you can see that it drops on its own since we powder it like our life depended on it. And there it is. Our little skinny, fragile little chain. It's so cute. This is my favorite chain mold. Okay, so I'll put this aside. Another difficult mold. I had a very, very hard time using this one. It's the Sea Life Mold by Wilton. Um, and all the parts on this are pretty thick. The borders and then this other border. The shells and the starfish are kind of easy to use. But what is very difficult is this piece of coral. 
if you can see that, there's a tiny, tiny little crevice there and a bunch of little bits and pieces. So what we will do is the same thing that we did. We will powder it with our cornstarch. Tap out the excess or brush it out. And I don't really use a rolling pin to stretch these out. I just give it kind of a shape with my fingers to fit the cavity. So it kind of fits there. There's a little space here that doesn't fit, but we'll be fine. Okay, so once we have it, you'll press it down. And then with your rolling pin, gently press in the fondant into the crevices. And you don't want to do this very abruptly because what it'll do if your rolling pin is sticky for some reason it'll pull the fondant and it'll just bring out the whole piece so gently i say gently but i'm grunting and struggling here okay and then we will pull halfway that way halfway this way And if you can see here, some of the time you won't be super successful. You'll have like a little stubborn tiny piece that didn't want to take the fondant. But you can always fix that. You can just insert a tiny piece of fondant. There we go. And then just keep cleaning this until it's clean enough to your standard and we'll do the same thing we did with our other mode we'll just clean the edges oh see that can happen so maybe you should powder this when you're cleaning it but we can fix it There we go. Okay. And now that we have it ready, it's molded in there, so we will apply the same technique and for this one it is a little bit more difficult since there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of tiny pieces so if you feel like you have to hold it up here it's probably easier to do this and you have to be very patient and kind of pull on the side and start pulling out your fondant from here Here it is, and the reason I brought this Tylos powder is because I use it, for example, when I need the fondant to harden in a certain shape. Um, depending on what you're using the decoration for, you can apply a tiny bit of this into your fondant and it'll dry a lot faster, it'll hold its shape, um, it'll hold its shape in whatever you're using it for as cupcake toppers, on cake pops, um, as a cake decoration, it really depends. I try not to use it that often, uh, but I find that sometimes I do need to use it, especially on molds that are really thin like this. It helps to strengthen the fondant and it makes it less likely for the fondant to tear on you. 
and here's what it looks like inside and I've permanently left this little guy living in there it's a quarter teaspoon obviously I don't use the whole quarter teaspoon uh, tiny ball like this you literally would use maybe whatever that is a pinch that's all you need but I'm not going to use it today I just brought it to show it to you as an alternative and now for our final mold I'm going to show you this weird gummy little guy that stretches and basically it's kind of like jello <laughs> anyway I don't usually powder this because I find that since it's really stretchy I can kind of wiggle it out without any trouble but if you do live in a humid area or if your fondant is really sticky depending on the brand that you use definitely powder your mold so it can be a lot easier and here again we do the same technique we try to squish it in the middle and kind of make a weird looking bow so it's a lot easier for us to mold this in so here's our little middle and for this I did grab too much so I'll just remove that with my glove and this is the cool thing about wearing gloves is it the fondant doesn't get stuck to your fingers and it's a lot easier to take out and just make sure you press in the fondant into all the crevices um, there's some molds like this one that have higher parts and lower parts on the higher parts you'll have less fondant than on the deeper ones so when you go to unmold this we'll use the same technique like we used in our first bow you'll grab the edge and slowly pull the fondant out and there we go and in, if y'all remember the first mold we did with the unicorn it is now out of the fridge, so let's try to unmold this and see if it doesn't break. So, the same technique, pulling. So when you do this pulling, um, especially on molds like these, it's easier if you go around all the edges and kind of wiggle all the edges out before you go to pull the whole thing out because if you try to do this all in one you will make the mold lose its shape there's our little unicorn pegasus mold and finally I'll just show all of them to you lined up so you can kind of remember what we went over.